starting to look more like a car again. We got both front fenders, you know, just loosely set in there, uh, the front grill on. So I could, I'm not gonna put the upper sections on yet because I still obviously need to get to a few things in there, but I wanted to get these things back on the car so they're out of the way, give me a little more room in the garage. So I kind of wanted to get these in place to give me a better idea of routing for the cables or wires. So let's continue. Well, we might have a little issue with the brake linkage here. As you know from the previous video, I already finished the whole brake system. However, after the engine install, this right here is the brake linkage from the pedal. And as you can see, it's hitting the motor. Terrific. So what I'm gonna do, or attempt to do, remove this arm. And as you can see, it has a little bit of a curvature to it. I am going to straighten it so it row is like right in between the engine and the steering linkage and pray that it doesn't break. Let's get it. As you can tell now, it clears the block, no problem. The brake should be fully engaged before it hits the exhaust. So we're in business. Let's uh, pull all this off. I'll oil all the shaft in there, put the new snap rings in, and this should be good to go. Well, more fabrication was needed as you can tell. I had to cut open the firewall to allow for the brake pedal to have more throw because once I straightened it out and uh, had the brake lever, uh, brake linkage set up, even that it was lined up in between here at full brake compression, it was still coming all the way down and hitting the exhaust. I had to cut open the firewall and allow for the brake arm to sit back further to allow more throw. I had to adjust the angle. So at full brake stop, we're about like right here, which is like a couple inches from the exhaust, which is perfect. I can now finally say that the brakes are done once again. We officially started the wiring process. Routed engine compartment wiring coming through the firewall there. I have it loomed up here just to get it out of the way until we're ready for it. Wires that are gonna go to the ignition switch. The ignition switch is right there. With this glorious wiring kit, they actually give you the new connectors that you can make to plug right in. These are the old connectors with the old wiring. Since they hooked us up with the new connectors and the connectors that go on the wire, let's get this connector set up and plugged in to the ignition switch. connector, new wires, fit into the factory ignition switch, nice and clean. And then we put the one other connector that's not used and it's placed and it locks in the other connector. And up the marks and snaps in. And just like that, the steering column is wired. It's getting a little bit cleaner. So now we're up to the gauges. I ran the, all the instrument wiring through up top.
cages are now in. They are all wired. Got the starter installed, shimmed, wired up. The alternator installed, main fuse power coming in. So this one is going to the starter, this one's going to the alternator, and this one's going to the fuse box. All that is good to go. The nice and clean custom throttle linkage cable going right through to the firewall there, nice and clean, steel braided line. Um, also, the kickdown cable has been installed and adjusted. I just uh, didn't want to cut this too short yet until I put an end on it. It does have a crimped end there, as you can see, but I kind of don't trust these with the little set screw deal. So I want to crimp the end and then I'll cut it shorter so it's clean. So from the previous segment, I'm sure you saw that the alternator was on the driver's side. However, and there's no water pump. Well, converting it over to a long water pump, that gave me a lot more options for bracketry to fit for the power steering and the alternator together because we are using those bottom bolts for a motor mount. Power steering, factory stuff, or just you know brackets that are available, they all want you to use those lower bolts. Can't use them, man. So we have the high performance long water pump, all the hardware. We are changing out the water neck to a straight. This is a straight 50 degree because I mocked up the factory OEM style radiator. And as you can see, it just comes straight down. So if we were to use this, you know, 45 degree angle, you know, traditional one we'd be having to do some crazy bends which we don't need to do so we put it straight so then we could just run a straight hose right across we also have the battery and the custom trunk mount with the extended cables and all the hardware that goes with it so we are going to mount this back here now i'm not sure if i showed you before but there was this top shelf i guess with the business coops there's a top shelf here then there's like drawers that slide out which is, you know, it, it takes up more space than it is useful. So I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna cut these rails off, make this a full. And of course, upon inspection, once I ripped this off, you know, little uh, Peter here was uh, taking shelter for about, you know, 20 plus years. A little crusty. So we'll find him a new home. Sorry, but eviction notice, you're out. With further ado, let's get the rest of these parts installed.
trunk is all done, all insulated, came out pretty good. So now we need to pick a spot to mount the battery. I am thinking along the lines over here towards the right side. However, directly underneath this is the gas tank. So we're gonna have to drop the gas tank so we're able to access the hole, to drill a hole and to put a bolt in to mount the battery mount and also to drill a hole to route for the battery cable. So let's get it. battery mounted, got the battery wired, we had a little ground post there, nice and clean for a solid ground, got a power going through the trunk with a grommet, ran nice and tight through the bottom, we got the tank back in, we got the ground wire for the sending unit and also the wire for the gauge, so we're going to route that to the gauges. And the power wire is ran all the way down through to the starter. Since this is now the first time having power to this thing, let's see when I turn the key if things click on. And it appears that everything is working. Voltmeter, looking good. Right around 13 volts. Obviously, there's not going to be any temp oil pressure. And the gas lean is not reading yet because we have to connect the wire and also program it to the certain for the type of sender that we have. Of course, the digital gauge there. So everything is working good. Let's see if it cranks. It cranks. I didn't screw up the wiring. Well, we don't know for sure yet, but so far everything's working.